Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is comedy king Frank DeLima. He has been and still continues to be one of the most successful, most funny comedians in the state of Hawaii for many decades. And today, we are going beyond the jokes. Frank, great having you here today on Beyond Thank the you. Lines. Thank you. Aloha, everybody. I know that uh, I have two big things in common with you. One is I'm part Portuguese. Oh, yeah. So I can handle all the jokes. Right on. And the second is I went to Damien. Verlitaraje. <laughs> Verlitaraje. Right on. That's both right on. <laughs> now, I want to ask you, Frank, about your background. You know, what schools did you go to before you went to Damien? Uh, kindergarten, I went to Paoa Elementary. Okay. Then I went to Cathedral School for eight years, and then off to Damien. Okay. And then I went on to uh, St. Stephen's Seminary, and we commuted to Chaminade, graduated from Chaminade. And then I went up to St. Patrick's uh, Theologate in Menlo Park, California, and uh, was there for three years. Got back home and was one year at Holy Trinity Church as a deacon, and, but the entertainer was getting stronger as I was going along. <laughs> you know, all the way through school, I was in charge of all the social events and the, and the fundraisers, the musician, the, the MC pep squad, pep rallies, <laughs> so um, always on the mic. Yeah. And so that was starting to get popular uh, in me, stronger in me. And so at that point, at Holy Trinity, I decided I better take a break and go out and find out where I really should be. And uh, so I did realize after I got hit, one hit after another, you know, but from Abdullah Fatah to <laughs> Lucille and, and beyond, with this one hit after another. And uh, so I said, maybe this is my career, but there's still something missing. And I want to, you know, continue to, um, to do something, you know, for the community and for the, you know, as a church person. And, and so I used to work at the, um, the summer fun summer camp programs for eight years while in the school and uh, so I picked up about how kid, what makes them laugh and what um, keeps their attention and that all came to be um, my first school was in Maui I had sold out my shows on the weekend I said okay but this is probably the time I feel like I'm supposed to do something I'm not doing anything during the day during the week <laughs> so I asked my cousin Charlie Aruda Charlie, is there a school close by? And so he said, yep, Kahului Elementary. The principal was, you know, open-minded, you know, and they, so he said, yeah, come on. And so he set up 800 kids, K-8, to and I went on stage. I said, God help me because <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do. But, you know, I was enough information in my head. I did a half hour. Kids laughed, but they also listened, and I gave my message, and that has continued for 40 years. Jeez. From one school to 300 schools on my schedule. That's, that is amazing. Yeah, the, the... I take, it takes two years to visit all 300. And uh, so I've seen every school K to eight, or almost every school, depending if they say yes or no. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, K to eight. And I've seen them, each, each of the kids, five times. Wow. Because I've been back to the schools and I would give messages as they're getting older. And um, it's been very successful. I still got a whole bunch of schools that I'm doing, uh, up to about 270. Jeez. And uh, like I said, it takes two years. So that's my program. <laughs> and I thank my sponsors because when Waikiki closed down, then I needed sponsors to pay the bills. <laughs> because I'm a volunteer, but I still cannot pay the bills. So Texaco takes helps me and Prince Kwanakoa and 
and uh, Sony Open and the federal, ex ex uh, uh, and I'm even asking the state if they can help, you know, now that um, I need that help. And yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what they say. But uh, that is important. Otherwise, the program cannot continue. So if they people want to donate, it's Frank DeLima at, at dot top, Frank DeLima dot com. Go on and do a donation. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for giving me that, that opportunity. Of course. And Frank, I remember when I was at Damien. Uh -huh. I mean, Damien was the most strict school in the state. Right. How was it when you were at Damien? Oh, man, it was strict. <laughs> but, you know, I was a nervous, nervous kid. And uh, so I never did get out of line. Okay. The only, I got my the black sample one time <laughs> on my hand, uh, and it was because of vocabulary. See, I have a problem with um, memorizing. Okay, yeah. And so the brothers really helped me there because they realized it. Um, so I had a problem there. Uh, so it kind of helped me back from becoming really a, a good student. But I was pretty good. good that's student, that's ironic know. that that you had problems with memorizations. Uh, yeah, I've always did because of my imagination. Yeah, it would keep wandering, especially if the the thing doesn't interest me. Yeah, then I start going off into tangents and daydreaming and and of course that wastes time and you still got to go back and memorize it <laughs> but like I remember it completely after four score and seven years ago <laughs> our forefathers brought forth from this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition <laughs> that all men are created equal and I took forever. <laughs> but there's a lot of songs and skits that are plenty of words. And most of them I was, I was, I did myself. So it was easier, you know, because it's in the brain. Even though you change this and that over and over again, it can't, you still got to memorize it. <laughs> but then there's a stuff, you know, scripts of plays and, and uh, stuff that my, uh, you know, my helper, Patrick Downs, would make, right, that I needed to go in and memorize the whole thing. I have a story about one of them is that I had a meeting with um, this uh, with a stage play, Christmas play, at Hawaii Theater. And we told the group that uh, they wanted me to be part of it. Don't give Frank any stuff, my manager said, <laughs> that he has to learn because it takes him forever to learn it. Uh, they didn't listen. <laughs> they didn't listen. All they told us there was, oh, it's Christmas song. <laughs> now you tell me, how many people in the public know Frosty the Snowman. You sing Frosty the Snowman. Da 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 da. da. You know, and uh, but I'm sure there's a son that know it. But you know, you gotta you gotta notice. I had to know the song. I was busy. I was top of my my career and so much shows and stuff like that. But uh, they gave me songs like What Are You Doing New Year's. I never heard that song <laughs> in my whole life. And I had to memorize that thing and sing to a puppet. And, oh, I tell you, I just had a hard time because they didn't believe. And I guess a lot of people don't realize that um, I have that memorizing problem. Whoa. So, yeah, through the years. But when I get the show and I'm on stage, I don't have that problem. You know, it's like it was easy, you know. But it takes work. Yeah. Frank, you know, let's talk about Portuguese bean soup. Oh, okay, yes. Now, mm. did you learn how to make Portuguese bean soup because of your mom? Mom used to make them. And uh, so I knew the recipe by the time, you know, I started taking over. And I thought that would be a good, a good thing to make for my building. You know, so at Christmas, I make a pot for them. I make a pot for... All the um, radio stations and TV stations thanking them for a year of their help. And, um, um, and so that continued for many years. I'm going to make one on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell them yet, but I'm going to send out the email that I'll be bringing soup on Monday. And, and uh, it takes about four to five hours wow. to make from buying the stuff to chopping it. And to boiling it, that's the longest part. <laughs> you got to get the ham, ham shanks off the bone, yep. have it flaw, fall off, and then it's ready. <laughs> then you add everything else, and you let it steep. 
A lot of my TV news anchor friends, they t they tell me every year that yeah. you deliver the Portuguese bean soup yeah. to the studios. Now, I want to ask you, Frank, I remember going to see your shows, I mean, multiple times at the noodle shop in Waikiki, and you did Lucille, Glenn Miyashiro, I mean, Imelda. I mean, how was it with all of those uh, different characters that you would invent at those times? How was it? Yeah, how was it like, because you're so creative at having so many different characters, and didn't Imelda come to like one oh, of yeah, your shows? Oh, she came to the show. Oh. Jim Neighbors brought her. Oh. <laughs> and but she was interested, because she hung out with show business people. So he, she knows show business, and she knows that uh, different comedians dress up as different, you know, big stars, and she was kind of flattered. And so she came down, they put her in the front seat, <laughs> and she had a bag of shoes. So when I walked on stage dressed like her, you know, I first I would... I, Panic! <laughs> I said, as Portuguese, we strong people. You know, I mean, yeah, I get got. So I went out there and I'm gonna face her. Yeah. And two of us with the duck glasses looking at each other. <laughs> and she busted out laughing. And when I started singing, I left my shoes in my Manila. <laughs> and then she she held up the shoes and said, here, have some. <laughs> It was hilarious. It was absolutely hilarious, yeah. Because, you know, before that, a lot of the the people that love me, Mel, that weren't, weren't ha happy at all with me, you know, dressed up as that. But when she came in, then they understood, yeah. yeah. That it's just, you know, doing, and simple stuff. I mean, it's not like going into the terrible things that they say she did. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I just stay with the shoes yeah. and the bra and, and the panties and, and the whatever hair. it is and the hair. And I said, and I'll leave it at home. At least that's fun, you know. And she loved it. Okay. She thought. She said, oh, you take good care. You didn't do anything mean. And I said, well, I'm, we're both Catholic. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I ran into her at church. <laughs> she was Sacred Heart side. I was St. Blessed Mother side. Didn't know we were both together. And after Mass, I heard, psh, psh. <laughs> And I looked around. I said, who's calling me? It was her. <laughs> With her son, Bong Bong. And oh, my goodness. Anyway. Oh, wow. Okay, Frank. And then you came up with Ethnicology 101. Right. What was that all about? I wanted to put something together that, you know, I get my message out about Hawaii, a culture in a culture. Therefore, it can be offensive to people that didn't grow up here. There's a few that even grew up here that really didn't get into it. But it came from the plantation days. And so I tell stories about that in that CD, about how our humor developed. And the fact that most people in Hawaii, they grow up with all the ethnics in their group, in their street, and they mingle with each other. The kids all play together, football and all that. That happened with me. Pay up the park and stay at each other's house. But me, I was more the type that would hang around the grandma and the grandpa and the mom and dad and listen to them and ask questions and stuff like that. So I picked up a lot of stuff, you know. <laughs> but so I wanted to let them know where this culture is. And most people got that sense of humor. They grew up with it, you know, at the garage party, at the luau, aunties with the flowers in their hair, singing like that and saying, hey, pake, <laughs> put that plastic bag away. You cannot take this food home. <laughs> I remember that so well. I was young and I tell you, the whole audience busted out laughing. But, you know, that's the local stuff. Yeah, and Frank, I have to ask you, what's your favorite food to eat? Beef stew and rice. <laughs> Beef stew and rice. Beef stew and rice, spaghetti plate, burger deluxe. Beef stew and rice, spaghetti plate, burger deluxe. What's more, I mean, one large, I mean, what's more, I mean, one large, I mean, one deluxe, one ton me. <laughs> I absolutely love it. You know, because of that song, I started to love beef stew and rice even more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there, it's something that uh, all the restaurant, local restaurants make, and it's it's like ono. Oh it's yeah. ono. Oh yeah. You know, the gravies, you know, that's what the whole thing is. Oh, totally. How the gravy is. 
Yeah, no, the gravy junk, then the beef stew not gonna be. <laughs> Frank, we're gonna take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're gonna continue going beyond the jokes. All right. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Frank DeLima. We'll be back in a quick minute. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Frank DeLima, who is one of the funniest comedians in the state of Hawaii for many, many decades. And today we are going beyond the jokes. Frank, I'm cracking up laughing with you. And you know, we're in December right now, almost Christmas time. And we all love the Filipino Christmas. Makalangdang sa loyot, biligot ang nagala bod 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 bod. I saw spirigot tala bili boy su sa resi toy tu balot 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 tito ikalamunga yo toy ariam bang bang dito bagong 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 dito ikalamunga o to tatam bariang siriam bang bang dito and on and on. And on. <laughs> Yeah, that song, you know, um, I went to a, a visit a school at okay. Waipahu Elementary, and the fifth grader, a student body president, straight A student, wonderful kid, came up to me and he said, Uncle Frank, I love your Filipino Christmas song. I can sing it. I said, from beginning to end? He said, yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, they say, it's all bulai. <laughs> Some of the words are, are, are bulai, but a lot of them are real. Where did you learn your words from? And I said, my neighbor and the ladies down at Blessed Sacrament Church, you know, the Filipino Catholic Club. So I used to pick up all these words because I used to ask them questions. What is this? What is that? What kind of plant do you have, Tata? And Tata would t teach me words like, bud bud, peche peche badoya, koskoron, bibinka, suman, diring diring, darang darang, soloyot, kalamungay, balut, and otot. All those words. And so, I, through the years, it stayed with me. And that's how my comedy was based. And I wanted to do a Christmas song, <laughs> a funny song, because Lucille was such a huge hit. Yeah. And I said, I gotta follow up with something for Christmas. And that song came to mind. And uh, today, right, because it was peppy. And I said, oh, what kind of words going to fit there, you know? <laughs> and the Filipino words came to be f perfect. Yeah. And uh, so I. Um, this guy, Tremaine Tamayose, he, one day he was, we were doing a commercial, and he started singing, Magadang dang saloyot, and uh, soyot, and I said, well, oh, I, I changed that to saloyot. <laughs> and, uh, but through the years, I added and added and added to it, and uh, it became the Filipino Christmas song. And um, the kid sang the whole thing. And then at the end, he said, Uncle Frank, I didn't hear the word for squid. I said, well, I never <laughs> heard that word. You know, I never learned it. He said, I'll spell it for you. It's Pusset, P-U-S-I-T, Pusset. I said, well, thank you for telling me that. And then he said, Uncle Frank, what is this? I said, well, it looks like a Pusset swimming. He said, yes. And what is this? I said, well, I don't know. He said, a Pusset. <laughs> I busted out laughing. <laughs> that kid had a joke building up and waiting for me to, to fall for it, and I did. Oh, Frank. Okay, so two weeks ago, I had Augie T on my TV show. Okay. And he said that you are one of his all-time idols. And 
you guys are all, you know, doing some comedy tour, some performances together. How is it with all of you guys, Mel Kabang, Augie, Andy Bumatai? How is it with you guys? Oh, we work wonderful together because each guy got his own category. And so we don't step on each other's toes as far as material. And uh, we know exactly what each other does, does, so we won't go there. You know, sometimes we'll overlap in our own shows. But when it comes to that, we know exactly what each guy does. So we work really well together off stage. We have good fun, <laughs> you know, in the dressing room. Malcolm Bang is, <laughs> oh, my goodness. He, that guy with his rubber face. And his, <laughs> it, it, Mel is, you know, I, he's the oldest of all of us. I come second. Okay. <laughs> and then comes uh, Andy. Yeah. And uh, Kaya is with Andy, I think, same age. And then the baby, which is Augie. Yeah. And uh, so Augie was, he did a show for his um, May Day or whatever it was when he was like in fourth grade or something, and he dressed up as Abdullah, Abdullah Fattah. <laughs> And um, so, and he just, he got great laughs, and so that was a big hit back then. That's yeah. how old I am, my <laughs> God. So I'm, I'm uh, he t always talks to me about that and yeah. other stuff, and I, that's nice to it, It's amazing, here. yeah, it's amazing that you guys are all, you know, you know doing that together. I mean, mm -hmm. and then there's another big show coming up this uh, March 2nd. That's correct. Yeah. 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 All right, now Frank, obviously, you know, you've achieved great success and you've sustained success, and I talk a lot about that in my book, Beyond the Lines. And you created a student enrichment program. And tell me about the impact that, the, you know, when you're there, you, you mentioned it earlier about that Maui school and, you know, performing in front of them, but through countless students through these decades, I mean, what is the impact that you're seeing through all these years with the kids? Well, the only thing that um, I can see if they remember what I did was my brother put, when the computer came out and he put a program on it, and so we give the kids the choice to go on and take a test. And um, through the years, the tests have been very good, you know. I just do multiple choice. And uh, the teachers say, come back or not, you yep. know. But <laughs> a lot of them, sometimes 100%, you know, whoever goes on. Um, it's only sampling because not everybody got the time or want to. Uh, got other things to do. But I get about 85% positive. Yeah, you know, the huge. kids know the songs. and I mean, the... The message. Yeah. Um, and that helps me that I'm doing the right thing, but it also makes me remember that I, next time I go, I got to develop the message and uh, keep developing it. Because they've seen me, all these young from kindergarten, and the songs have to be updated. Except for kindergarten to third grade, I still do peanut butter and jelly <laughs> and going on a butahad. In fact, I have a story about it. Somebody that I was uh, taking my blood for blood tests yeah. at uh, um, Strop. And so this 26-year-old, I found out after what he told me, um, he said, Uncle Frank, nice to meet you. What is your your name? And I said, you just said Uncle Frank. <laughs> he said, you're f yeah, I'm formally. And I said, I'm Frank Wilcox Denima Jr. He said, thank you very much. So he says, okay. Um, ooh, you get a good vein. And so he sticks the needle in. And as the blood is going out into the vial, he starts singing, peanut, peanut butter, jelly. <laughs> And I cracked up that. <laughs> I said, what is this? I never expected this. He said, Kona, why not? I mean, elementary school, and I was in first grade. I said, you rem remember that visit? He said, yeah, and you visited after that, too. And um, he said, thank you. And I said, well, thank you for letting me know. So it was, you know, that, that was like out of nowhere. Another time I stopped at the stop sign and had this uh, construction workers, you know, doing something in the road. 
and they spotted me, so they all looked, you know, and one of them said, going on a Bhutan. <laughs> and then the other three chimed in. So you have these three blalas with the, with the construction hat on, singing, going on a Bhutan. I mean, you have to be there. It was. So through the years, it's gotten even more yeah. and more. There are more, more waiters and, and stewardesses, you know. I was on um, Island Air. And the steward to the front, I was sitting in front, and she was facing me, and she was looking at me and kept looking at me, you know. And when the plane started taking off, she started going, going on a buta. <laughs> <laughs> Man, blows my mind, but, you know, it's nice. If they only remember that, well, at least they remember that. <laughs> well, but, I, re I remember when I was at Damien, mm -hmm. and you came to perform for all of us at, at school, and you're so inspirational and made us all feel so happy. And, and I want to ask you, Frank, about your definition of success. What do, you, what do you think success means? Three things. The first is that you never pass up the opportunity to learn more. And whatever, whatever ability you have, you make the best use of it. And, uh, and I include that because of my you know, hard time memorizing, you know. yeah, yeah. but you just get to do the best you can and get it done. Secondly is to um, take care of your health. And it's so easy for you to not think about the future, just what you're doing now. You feel great. Like I got diabetes from overweight. Um, I was fine to 20 and 30 years old. I was great. I, after work, we'd eat all oh, whatever beef stew, so rice, nice. <laughs> and you know, and you know, like three scoop of ice cream with a half a pie, and oh, it was this you know whatever we wanted. And um, but then you get older, and not all humans, but a lot of them start putting on the weight. The body body slows down, doesn't burn the food fast enough. So, um, doctor told me you better watch out. You're gonna get. Um, diabetes, and I said, I asked my mom, there, me, I said, hey, we had diabetes in the family. He said, she said no, because I thought diabetes is inherited. I didn't know that you could actually get it from being overweight and older. And so, about three, let's see, when I was like 50 is when I got it. And the doctor said, I told you, and you never listened. I said, well, I didn't know about type two and you know, and all that. And he said, that's why. Type one, you inherit. Type two, you know, listen. <laughs> and so I had to go and lose 100 pounds. I did. Now I'm off the medication about two years ago. And I thank my doctor for his encouragement and so forth. And uh, so that's, that's why I say to everybody to please be cautious when you're young. And uh, just take care of your health and fruit and vegetables and whatever it takes. And the uh, smoking and all that stuff is um, not good. And uh, so health is second. Mm -hmm. Because in order to, pro to progress in life, you need to have your health. You need that. And it's diseases that are out there, you know, you need a heart, strong heart and lungs so they can fight it. So you can live to be 80 years old and still go to the senior center <laughs> and boogie. And <laughs> boogie. Yeah. <laughs> And then the third thing is to have aloha, you know, that uh, to always think about other people. Like when the, the light, you know, you, the arrow going to turn, you know, and you're in a line, and you're the first person, and the arrow only lasts for a short time. That's you know right. that. And get plenty of people, got things to do. <laughs> and you start off real slow and make the turn. And only two cars go through. <laughs> I always think about the people behind me when I drive as well. And, and, I, and people that, you know, are, are just around, talk nice, you know, and get to know them. I tell the kids that at the school. I said, always treat people good, all your classmates, schoolmates, because you're learning how to realize that people think differently. And when you have like disagreements, you, you debate, but you don't get to the point where you don't talk to them for five years. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing, which is typical human, but I try to this for myself, always try to just get along with everyone. I get challenges, I get people that are angry with me, 
and stuff, but I don't let them turn me angry. I love and, uh, I love those insights from you, yeah, Frank. And thank you. you know, uh, you again, you're such an inspiration to countless people in Hawaii, and including me. And I really want to thank you for your time and being on Beyond the Lines today. Sure. And uh, hope to uh, do a sequel episode with you in the future. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Frank. Thank you for for having me. Aloha. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit my website, RustyKomori.com. And my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that this show inspires you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Aloha.